Siege is a unique game that puts you into a unique situation. Gun skill and reaction time aren't all that you need to overcome the steep learning curve that new players must face. Strategical knowledge and understanding are what will make or break most of your matches. Welcome to Siege Basics. Welcome to the first ever episode of Siege Basics. In this episode, we will be covering anchoring as a defender. This skill is one of the fundamentals of defending a site. Not understanding anchoring is a fatal mistake that can lead you and your team to a series of losses. Anchoring is a defender-specific term that means holding down a specific area as a defender. Anchors usually do not leave the area that they are playing unless attackers force them out. Alternatives to anchoring are lurking and roaming. Videos on those two play types will be coming in the very near future. Before you make the choice to anchor, consider which operators and roles your teammates plan to fulfill. On a basic site hold, there should be three to four anchors playing with one or two roamers. So by following that logic, if you have three people who plan to roam on your team, one of you might be better off staying on site. Issues with this often result from a lack of communication, which is common in solo queue games. This can leave you with too many roaming operators or too many anchoring operators. Make sure you communicate with your team to avoid this mistake. So which operators should you play while anchoring? Well, first you have to understand that all operators can anchor. However, some are better fit for roaming. Because Siege is going to keep coming out with ops, and I can't cover all of them, I'll explain to you the logic behind what makes someone a good anchor or a good roamer so you can decide for yourself. As of now, there are only three types of defender utility. Internal utility, which are operators like Pulse and Dock, where they cannot place down their utility and are only effective while they are alive. The second is static utility. This utility can be placed down and requires no maintenance to be effective. A good example of static utility are operators like Jaeger and Rook. The third type of utility is dynamic utility which is utility that can be placed down but takes time to produce. Two good examples of this are Legion and Wamai. Operators with static utility are almost always better off roaming, with the exception of three armor operators, which produce a considerable amount of noise, making them bad roamers. Operators with static utility can adopt a more aggressive playstyle because they don't have to be alive for their utility. Roaming is a more aggressive playstyle, so these operators are better fit to roam and three armor operators that remain on site with static utility can peak more liberally than operators with internal utility or dynamic utility. Operators with internal utility are usually better fit to anchor because anchoring has a lesser chance of death early on in the round. And internal utility ops are only effective as long as they are alive. So if they can stay alive longer by playing a less exposed role, they have a higher chance of using their utility. But Pulse has internal utility, right? Well, most Pulse players roam, so you're wrong. Well, this isn't true. Most Pulse players anchor, just not on site. Pulse usually anchors below a site and uses his ability to deny plant on site from below. However, as of now, there are two exceptions to this rule. Vigil and Kavera. These two operators have internal utility, but this internal utility was specifically designed for them to roam. Dynamic utility almost always has to stay on site and anchor. Because the utility charges up over time, the longer the operator can stay alive, the more effective and the more utility the operator will produce. Once again, there is one exception, which is Oryx. Like Kavera and Vigil, Oryx was specifically designed to roam. More specifically, to flank. I know that that's a lot of information, so feel free to ask questions in the comments if you have any. Now that you hopefully understand which operators you should be playing when you anchor, it's time to learn about what to do during the round. During the prep phase, if you have impacts I mean, or a shotgun, make rotations for your team. Right. Next, if there are hatches to reinforce, reinforce those. This will take longer than reinforcing on site, but you as an anchor have more free time than a roamer. Because roamers see action immediately, so if they're not in position right when they need to be, on time, they might get picked off early. But you as an anchor have probably 30 seconds before you see your first fight. So get those hatches and help your roamers out. This next part is very important. Think about where you're going to position yourself during the round. Now think about where you'll be exposed from 
playing that position. If you're going to be exposed from the outside of the building where attackers will have an advantage, you should probably change positions. Next, think about other points of exposure and how you will cover them. If you'll be exposed from a staircase, barbed wire is a great solution. Attackers have to destroy the barbed wire, alerting you before they peek you. If you'll be exposed from a room or a doorway, or a breach, have someone place a cam watching that exposure point. You can use this cam to make sure no one's coming there, and if someone does come, you can reposition. Breach, breach, breach. Onto the action phase. For simplicity's sake, I will split the action phase up into six parts, each containing 30 seconds of the round. From minute 3 to 2.30, there are two things that you should be doing. First, watch for sneaky ash mains who are going to try to sneak their way into sight up the nearest staircase. The barbed wire and cams from earlier will help with this one, but this is more important than a lot of people think. I have gotten countless early picks just by paying attention in the beginning of the round and catching dumb attackers. The second thing you should be doing in your first 30 seconds of the round is playing on cams. Default cameras can often give away an attacker's position, allowing roamers to flank. This step is so often overlooked by ranked players, but it can positively pay off for your team later in the round. Swapping between cams and communicating with your roamers can more often than not leave you with an early advantage with a pick. From minute 2.30 to minute 2. If you have seen a push from attackers, you should probably start holding angles and attempting to deny their pushes. For example, if you're smoke, maybe you can throw another smoke canister over there and attempt to slow them down. Or if you're legion, huck a couple more goo mines over there and try to get them to slow yeah, down. Shot. But if attackers haven't made a push yet and they don't have control of much, you can probably just continue playing on cams and feeding your roamers intel, hoping for another pick or two. From minute 2 to minute 130, things might start to get rough. If roamers have done an okay job, you might start to see a hard push from attackers. Walls might start to get opened around you and windows might get breached. At this point, you definitely want to be off your cams. You still need to be giving call outs to your teammates. Make sure you call out where attackers are pushing from so roamers can flank if they are still alive. If your position is compromised by a breach, right now is probably your only time to rotate. Keep in mind that wherever you rotate to should be your final position. This means that you're gonna die defending it. However, don't rotate unless you really, really need to. Giving attackers too much control early on in the round can make the latter fights much harder. From minute 130 to minute 1, things start to get crazy. At this point, attackers most likely have control of one part of the map. I'll use an example here. Take third floor on cafe. Say it's halfway through the round and the attackers have cigar and piano and they just breached freezer. At this point, you want to isolate their push. What this means is don't let attackers take control of anything else. If they have cigar and meat locker, they can't win because they can only engage you from the front. That means all of sight is still under your control. The only thing that they can do is peek. So it's crucial at this point that you don't over peek. Instead, reposition. In this case, the next step for attackers is to try to take white stairs and white hallway in order to pinch sight. What you need to do is reposition to hold white. Or, if you're unable to reposition to defend white, you can put yourself in a position where you'll be safe from attackers playing on white side. From minute 1 to 30 seconds, attackers will start playing very aggressively. Make sure you hold your position for as long as you can and try to stay alive. From 30 seconds to the end of the round, you have two options. One, if you have plant denial such as a nitrocell, a smoke grenade, echo drones, or maestro turrets, you can try to run away and slow or even stop the plant. But if you don't have plant denial, hold angles on attacker push-ups and try to get picks. If you and your team have gotten the round to this point, where there's only 30 seconds left and you still have control of sight, there is a very, very low chance that the attackers are going to win. They're going to have to rush you or try something crazy in order to win the round. As long as you hold your angles and rely on your superior positioning, you're going to end up with the W. This leaves one last thing to talk about. Positioning. As an anchor, you want to position yourself so you will have an advantage over attackers positioning. This can be done in a lot of ways, either by holding a tighter angle than your attacker, or having an unknown or strange angle that an attacker wouldn't point out normally. Or, 
you can just give yourself a deployable shield or something that you can peek over and watch through, such as a Mira or a deployable shield, like I just said. But make sure when you do peek, you peek in a safe way. That means not exposing your entire body on a peek, maybe just your head or some of your body through a crouch. But if you're exposing your entire body, chances are you're going to have an equal chance of winning your fight with your attacker. So that means 50-50 either way, which is an issue since attackers usually have stronger guns than defenders. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. If you found this video helpful in any way and want to return the favor, go drop a thumbs up and subscribe. Also, go leave a comment about what you want me to cover next on my Siege Basics series. Don't forget, I stream almost every day on Twitch, and I might even be live right now, right after you finish watching this. I'll leave a link to my channel in the description. Come hang out, I really love getting to know you guys.